All right, welcome back to an episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today we are going to be looking at the Surface Book 2 after week one. So I know we've skipped ahead a little bit in time, but that's because I got the laptop and it pretty much immediately went into service uh, replacing the MacBook. And we'll talk more about the comparisons in a little bit. Uh, first few impressions that I wanted to get out of the way uh, before we went on too much further, and there were a couple things I noticed that I hadn't heard any reviewer uh, mention. And this might be trivial, it may not, it depends on your situation. The first thing is that this laptop sits incredibly flush against the table surface. Like the gap between the bottom of the machine and the table, you can get a few sheets of paper underneath, but that is literally it. There is uh, no gap of any kind. And that, eh, it's a bit bothersome to be perfectly honest with you, because if we take a look at how flush this thing sits, uh, with the table, I would be wary of, say, having this on a table, someone across from me has a coffee and it spills, uh, that liquid is undoubtedly going to come up to the level of these ports uh, without any difficulty whatsoever. So I would be very conscious if there are any beverages on any tables that I'd be using this particular unit. Uh, for liquid damage from the side, not necessarily from the top. So that is one thing to kind of keep in mind. The second thing is, is that the rubber strips that are on the bottom of the machine are very, very subtle. They do not add a whole lot of thickness uh, to the overall design, and they do not add a significant amount of grip. And what I mean is that you can easily uh, move the machine around on the desk and again you might say you know that's really trivial stuff but trust me when you're using this machine as much as I am uh, in my day-to-day -day use and you're moving it as often as I am knowing that this thing slides on a desk is worth noting if we compare it uh, against the other laptops that I'm currently using like the ThinkPad it is significantly uh, more difficult uh, to move around with all of its rubber feet there. And if we compare it against my MacBook uh, Pro Retina 2013, um, this one doesn't move around anywhere uh, near as easily, and it only has four rubber feet, and it's got a significantly larger uh, gap that liquid could travel underneath and not necessarily uh, cause port damage. It might get in the vents here, but it wouldn't cause port damage, or at least I don't think it would. So if you're looking for a good reason to get the complete warranty, uh, that's a, another one. Uh, other initial impressions about the hardware itself is the, the hinge. This is actually super duper comfortable to hold and carry. Uh, it's very natural, it's nice and smooth on these corners. It's actually very comfortable to hold with a few file folders uh, in your hand. It's a very lightweight machine. And for a person of my size, the 13 inch was actually perfect to hold the tablet portion of the unit uh, from my wrist to the crook of my, my elbow here. I could do it quite comfortably. The 15 inch was a little large for that. And that's just, you know, kind of the, the body build. The other point that I want to make is actually to do with the kind of the scorpion style hinge and why this gap exists. It supposedly exists so the keyboard balances well uh, without adding additional like weights and stuff to the bottom, which is all well and good. Um, but I also found out another interesting point that I haven't heard another reviewer mention, and it actually has to do with the keyboard deck. The keyboard deck is not recessed into the machine, and I apologize, that's a bit blurry. It's the focal length of the lens. Um, and this actually creates probably one of the best mobile typing experiences uh, that I have had uh, on a laptop. I did a casual test. I'm a pretty quick typer, and I was able to get 73 words per minute on these keys. They're not spongy. There is a very nice, firm actuation point that reminds me, but does not truly compare to the ThinkPad keyboard, um, but it was certainly 
if I had to rank the laptops that I've used, the ThinkPad keyboard offers a lot of resistance, and if you are a firmer typer, that's great. But this to me is the sweet spot between uh, firm key press, um, but also a good motion of key travel. And it just works uh, beautifully. So they really knocked the keyboard out of the park, except for one thing. And that is if you use uh, backlight functionality on this guy, uh, when there's light, it actually makes the keys uh, incredibly difficult to read and it just, it looks like rubbish. <laughs> so honestly, I've actually kept the backlit keyboard off so I can read uh, the letters easily. I haven't used this machine in the dark enough to really uh, toggle that on. So whereas some backlit keyboards that are say black keycaps with white lettering, like the MacBooks, uh, that's A-OK, -okay, and the contrast means that you can still actually read what is on the keycaps, and I'll uh, just grab the, the MacBook very quickly. So here are the, the white uh, lettering black keycaps. I think my point is made clear. The black keycaps are definitely the smarter design. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. <laughs> um, so that is an interesting choice. If there was a company that made like replacement keycaps or like skins for keycaps, I would actually be very tempted to replace those. Um, just as a thought. The trackpad has taken a bit of getting used to, but not as much because I've gone from like TrackPoint to the Mac trackpad. I don't generally have a lot of experience trigger time with Windows trackpads. Uh, that being said, the Windows uh, 10 experience with the touchpad, it, I will not pretend that it is as good as the Mac, but they do have gestures in Windows 10 now, and a lot of the gestures that a Mac user would be used to work very nicely on this trackpad. If there is an option to, say, disable tap clicking, I think that a lot of Mac users could easily make the transition and not be left wanting a great deal. I, again, I'm not going to pretend that this one is equal to this one, but this one comes close enough that I am not missing this. Like when you use this, it's kind of like that second vacation, that second tropical vacation maybe you've taken. You know, it wasn't as good as the first, but it's still got all of the elements and it's still really good and enjoyable. But that first one will always be kind of special to you. Well, it's, it's kind of the same way with the trackpads. At least that's how I would describe it. So trackpad, keyboard, highly functional. I haven't had any real uh, issues with either one. And so far, initial impressions have been pretty good. Uh, so throughout the, the weeks, uh, as I get time, I will kind of stop and do little short uh, vignettes like this where I try to focus in on particular parts. So today it was the... Uh, the keyboard and the trackpad and just some of the, the physical uh, components of this. And in future episodes, I'm already thinking of content uh, to discuss with regards to use of the Smart, or pardon me, not the Smart Pen, uh, the Surface Pen and a few extra features that I have found uh, in the software that have actually made this pen uh, originally more than I thought it was going to be, which is really cool. Anyway, Please stay tuned. If you like this sort of content, I would encourage you to show your support by subscribing. If you have questions or if you want to see specific things about this laptop or any of the other ones that I own, please ask them in the comments below. I'm really good at getting back to you. And once again, thanks you uh, for watching.